those 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 Tribute cars you have. Yes. How did you come across those? Um, a few years ago, I was hired by a haunt in uh, Virginia, and they had hired a gentleman that lived in Richmond who built these cars to drive me around, and we became friends. And uh, a few years ago, he was going to retire, and he asked if I knew anybody who would like to purchase his cars, and I stepped in the front of the line, <laughs> and I said, I would love to have the cars, and as it turns out, you know, they're now mine. I'll trade you a Nissan Altima for one. <laughs> <laughs> What well, kind of mileage, right? Uh, yeah. One of my favorite things to do. Well, we do drag strip recreations of the Hot Rod Herman episode. That's my favorite destination. <laughs> well, I had to tell my car story. Yeah. What's my car story? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah tell her, tell her. She's got a great story about a car. I, I did a movie with Elvis Presley mm -hmm. called Easy Come, Easy Go. And uh, we were, you know, not in the scene, and we were sitting in the direct you know, our director's chairs and just chatting and um, with Elvis and I told him I was, you know, looking to buy a car and just, of course, the things and he said, well, what are you looking for? And I said, well, I've been looking at a Pontiac Grand Prix and he said, oh, well, I have a car that I'll sell you and I said, oh, Elvis, I couldn't afford any of your cars and I said, but uh, what kind of car is it? And he said, it's a 1965 Cadillac convertible and leather interior, black top. And I said, oh, that sounds really nice. Uh, how much do you want for it? And he said, how about $3,000? And I said, sold. <laughs> now, fast forward. I drove it for a couple of years. And then I traded it in for a Pontiac Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Not as Elvis's car, and the keychain even said EP. I never said anything about it being Elvis's car. I traded it in for the Pontiac. That was the first retirement fund I threw away. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe she gave the keychain with a car. Oh, yeah, the keychain <laughs> And how about Lucy's shoes? Oh, Lucy Wolf shoes, right. Well, um, the very good friend, I had done a couple of Lucy shows, and I knew Lucy, uh, Lucy's Hill. And my friend was her voice coach. And so one day she said, I've got to stop by Lucy's. I've got to get some things. Do you want to go with me? And I said, sure. So we walked in and she was always playing backgammon, every day, backgammon, with a friend. So we walked in and, and my friend, you know, got what she had to get and Lucy said, oh, by the way, Pat, what size shoes do you wear? And I said, well, I wear an AP, and she said, oh, well, so do I. She said, there's a bag of shoes there by the back kitchen door. If you want them, take them. So I took the big black plastic garbage bag full of shoes, so I took them. And I came home, one box said, one box said L ball. And all the rest were, you know, just shoes, nice shoes. I sold them in a garage sale for a dollar piece. <laughs> <laughs> I kept I kept the box with the, the pair of shoes which I have today that says L ball, but all the rest went for a dollar pair. Not as Lucy's shoes, they were just shoes. So that was another part of my retirement that went by the way. See, that's why I'm out doing shows. <laughs> now, this is your last QA, Craig. Oh, yes. Let's, let's hear any question. This is the last chance. Next next time you have to go to you'll have to go to Idaho. <laughs> Her farewell tour. Yeah. I go to the market every other day. So you can see me there. <laughs> she's not like Cher when she says she's retiring. She means it. <laughs> Well, um, at the time, I was I had just finished the Monsters, and Hal Wallace uh, was the producer on um, easy, my, the show I did was Easy Come, Easy Go, Story of My Life, and uh, 
he called, they, they got in touch with my agent and said that he had a leading interview with Mr. Wallace. And I did. And called my agent and said, I had the job. I mean, it was just that, that for me, it was quite easy. But, but I just come off the monster. monster. It was a search for her, though, because she played a bad girl. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, invariably in monster movies, the bad girl is usually a brunette and the good girl is a blonde. So in this movie, they decided for the bad girl to be a blonde and the good girl to be a brunette. And everyone asked me, oh, did you get to kiss him? No, because Elvis does not kiss bad girls. <laughs> At least on screen. <laughs> now, I was married and had two children at the time. Not very exciting. Well, and Priscilla was very much in the picture at that time, although she never came on the set. But he had an entourage of ten guys, wonderful guys, and they came every day and they all fulfilled various, you know, jobs for him. And I was just at Graceland for my first time in August to do a show on his, his uh, 40th year of his death. And I couldn't believe people from all over the world were there. And Priscilla was a brunette, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> See how that worked there out? There you go. <laughs> and out of curiosity, um, y'all been doing this for so many decades, um, I have to ask because I'm hosting it. Is there any question you always wanted to be asked but we didn't ask it yet? If so, just wonder. It's your farewell, so anything. My age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 81. <laughs> I'll tell it now. I'm proud to get gotten now. Yeah, you wear it well. You wear it well. Pushing and telling No, I'm not. She looks good for 81. Man, and yet, just and look she's at this doing good for 81. You got older folks. Oh, I mean, uh, the Monsters has got a huge, it's got a great fan base. I just recently got married. And we started up an official Monsters fan group with my wife Leela, and she, and everybody come by the table and get a card and join the group. But she works it. She keeps it family friendly. She keeps it spam free. But it's grown from a thousand people when I met her to over. We'll have fourteen thousand people by the end. Wow. Of the and it's, uh, it's, she calls it her monster daycare. <laughs> she, she, she takes care of it, she takes care of it as if it's her family, and she does a wonderful job. But literally, one of the neat things about it is, for me, I was always active and busy, but now that I've got my wife involved in it, it's become really um, a sort of more of a family affair now. It really is. Oh, and, and his wife takes care of me too. I mean, if I'm just sitting there and I sneeze, she hands me a bag of sneeze. <laughs> she, uh, it's, I, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. It's been really good for she me. She does everything for me. She's wonderful. And the, and the Munster fan base is a global thing. Like you said, Turkey, it was all, all over the world. And it's, it's interesting that people that are in hot rods, they seem to love it because they, they were inspired by the George Barris cars. People that like horror and monster movies, well, obviously the Universals. In fact, the Universal, the the success of the show is interesting because you had the producers of Leave It to Beaver, which is a very family-oriented show in the 50s and early 60s, a huge success. They were looking for a vehicle, and they were at Universal Studios, which was the Monster Studio, and they figured out a way to take the best of these two worlds of a family-friendly show with the Universal Monster talent and the set designs and all the lighting and techniques and put it together that on paper you would think it wouldn't work with New York actors and a movie star and all this put into this big mixing pot, and they came up with this incredible two-year series that was just magic. And, it, and I think that's one of the reasons why it worked so well, is it was just so unusual, so unique, so one of a kind, and yet it's still around. So on that level, it's, it's a pretty magical situation. All done. I'm proud to be part of it. And the timing again, the 60s, yeah. you know, like you were talking about. It was, it was just one of those one of a kind things. Man, and here we are, from Turkey to Texas. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. Go figure. I like Texas. I almost bought a home in Fredericksburg. Really? What stopped you? Uh, 
What happened to me? Yeah, what stopped you from buying that house in Fredericksburg? Well, my children are all. Well, I, actually, my children are in California. I moved away from them. I guess, <laughs> <laughs> I, guess I could have come to Texas, but yeah. I figured that was even further. But I really loved it. I, I traveled in New Brunswick and Green and Bernie and, mm -hmm. and uh, Fredericksburg. And uh, I just, I, you know. But Idaho had the potatoes, or what? How come we didn't get the gig? <laughs> Did Idaho have the potatoes? How come Texas didn't get the gig? <laughs> well, uh, my husband and I were skiers, and so Sun Valley was beckoning to us. <laughs> And so we moved there because to ski. Mm -hmm. And of course, no longer we look at the slope, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you now we can move to Texas. Yeah. That's right. We don't get snow. We don't get snow. We get pretty good weather. We love you. Oh, thank you. Well, I love Texas too. Oh, well, there you go. I do. There you go. The roadkill barbecue we're known for. Oh, I got a, let me tell you, I've got a man tomorrow delivering me some barbecued ribs. Really? Yes, absolutely. Better ask for some ID and find out where those ribs came from, lady. I'm just saying. Oh, I thought it was I think Hog Street or something like that. Um, he caters ribs and things and asked me, did I like them? And I said, well, I was a Pope Catholic. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so he said, I'm going to bring you some tomorrow. I'm not sharing. <laughs> not with anyone. Really? <laughs> I don't share ribs and lobster. <laughs> Man, any other questions? Yes. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys how much I enjoyed your show. And um, my dad was in the Air Force, and so we traveled all over the world. And there are places where we didn't have American TV, but Somehow the monsters always made it where we were at, you know, through Armed Forces Network. So, um, let's just say Oh, that's great. You know, I traveled, speaking of that, all over the world. My husband and I had gone to Italy, and we had walked into a hotel in Italy, and were waiting to check in, and in the lobby of the hotel, they had a television set, and the Munsters was on. Now, we were dubbed in Italian, and my husband said, Oh, my word, look, look what's on the said, You say one word. <laughs> I said, I'm out of here. And he didn't. But it was funny, so I do know what you mean. There you go, they know something, yeah. Y'all ever keep any props from the show? Did you keep any props from the show? No. Butch has some props. Well, I, I have. <laughs> I, 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 I have I nothing. I did acquire them from the show. I acquired them after the fact, and through the years I've accumulated a few things, yeah. But nothing at the time. Did you keep him on the werewolf? I got him. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I didn't get him until I, about six years later when I was doing Ironside. And, uh, I was doing Ironside, and the prop man came up to me, and uh, Eddie Keys was his name, and he had kept him, and he gave him to me, so. And then I wound up with the George Bear Stingray, uh, Von Dutch Stingray bicycle that was never on the show, but they brought it out for me to ride around on a lot. I have that now, and then I have my tribute cars. And um, next week I'm buying the original door knocker from the front door of the, oh, of the house. Oh, sweet. If you come by my table, you will see I have a picture of me, a photo shoot that I did for George Ferris with the Munster coach. And I am sitting on the front of the Munster coach in a leopard bathing suit. I have that bathing suit. It fits my right leg. <laughs> but I have it. <laughs> there was somebody else, I think. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, first of all, I want to say I loved your show. It was part of my ritual when coming home from school. Yes. And uh, my main question is, uh, a few years back, they, there was a show called Mockingbird Lake that was made. Mm -hmm. Have you all ever seen it? And if you did, what did you think of it? I actually went out on the set the last day of that shoot. Kevin Burns, again, uh, was involved with that. 
I went out and met, uh, it was Brian Fuller and Brian Singer, uh, A-list people, great, great cast. You know, you had a lot of people on Portia de Rossi and Eddie Izzard and Jerry O'Connell. And I, inter I actually introduced that show at San Diego Comic Con uh, that year to good response. I mean, it really liked it. I was actually going to be in the show, uh, had it gotten picked up. So I was kind of bummed that it didn't. I didn't think it was the Munsters remake. It was more of a Munster inspired show. It wasn't trying to duplicate the Munsters like the Munsters today with John Shuck and Lee Merriweather. I'm surprised it didn't get picked up. But Universal and, and the Munster ownership, they've got a very strange relationship and they really protect the image of that show. But the thing with Mockingbird Lane was everybody, if you didn't know what the Munsters were, you might watch Mockingbird Lane out of curiosity, but if you were a Munsters fan, you immediately knew what it was about. And that's what Kevin Burns told him to call it. He says, call Mockingbird Lane, you'll get all the Munster fans to watch it, but you won't be going to the well again of making the Munsters again. But, you know, and now Seth Meyers actually is making a, a reboot, moving the Munsters to New York, and I've been speaking with them because I had some ideas why the last one didn't work. And I told him that he would be welcome to use my props and my cars if he'd like to. So we have a meeting with them uh, probably within a couple of weeks about possibly in getting involved with his version of the Munsters in New York. We'll see where it goes, what happens. And would either of you be willing to do cameos in Seth Meyers' uh, Munsters in the New York? One, one, I'm sorry, one more time. Would you be willing to be on the scene? Yeah, oh, you, uh, you know, that depends on them. I just, that, I would love to be part of the creative process, and I kind of gave them some ideas that where I thought they're going to require some jobs. I said, you know, Herman could be an Uber driver and my muster coach. <laughs> Grandpa could be blood delivery, you know, blood, blood delivery in the, in the Dracula, but I think a fun place for him to work would be owning a movie theater where they're showing old classic monster movies, which they consider to be comedies. And everybody else considers them to be scary, and you get that you know you get that range from the old school to the modern day school, and you got to have something to do. And they actually seem to like the idea, so with a little bit of luck, maybe something may come of it. You know, I'm just happy that somebody's doing it. I think the New York move might work because Fred and Al were they were from New York. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you guys have a favorite episode that you filmed in the Monsters? Yeah, we had, the Hot Rod, Hot Rod Herman was my favorite episode, and, the, and A Man for Maryland. Yeah, Man for Maryland. Or, or the uh, Progressive Emerald, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? One more. Your favorite made a movie of the Munsters, who would you guys like to play you guys? Great play me? Yeah. Oh, I, wouldn't, I don't have a clue on me, but Tom I, I know Brad Garrett would be great because Herman. And uh, who else did I ever say somebody else from Lily? I can't remember who it was. This comes up all the time, but Brad Garrett, by hands down, would be a great Herman. Oh, yes, absolutely. And what about for you, Mary? I'm just trying to think of who it Young Blonde. Who young Blonde. Kristen Bell. Oh, interesting. Fan's choice. How about Anna Ferris? Oh, Anna Ferris. Yeah. Um, uh, who did they have as Lily? They had someone that said someone that said Lily. It was a really good choice. I can't remember. Catherine Zeta Johnson. Yeah, that would work. Oh, there you go. Good choice. Good choice. I'll have, I'll have, I'll have uh, Lila put that out in the fan group and see how many people come up with ideas. Okay, that's a good we love question. it. We come up with contests and ideas all the time. Interesting question. Thank you. Well, let me tell you, being up here with you people is such a privilege. Thank you. Well, and thank you. Um, seeing you guys in the audience and if y'all could see what i'm seeing right now you look out in the audience and you've got you know creep show texas chainsaw massacre maniac famous monsters of film like these people were there before all of that yeah. isn't that awesome man isn't that awesome yeah. y'all are here before scary, we scary. <laughs> <laughs> but you you made your you made your mark you made your mark yes thank you Thank you all. And it's Thank because you. of people. Thank you very, very, very much. I was just a kid going to work. <laughs> A farewell tour, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.